Hi folks, welcome to another Wednesday widget. We're going to manufacture a 9mm muzzle brake or compensator for an AR-15 rifle. Welcome to part 2 of the NYC CNT video series on DIY machining a muzzle brake for a 9mm AR. In part 1 we covered the CAD file which gets us to here. Let's bang through the cam. First, a couple notes. One, this is Sprute Cam 9. It's one of my first projects using it. I'm not going to consider this video a tutorial or intro to Sprute Cam 9 because I'm still learning it, but I will cover a few of the little things I've noticed so far. Two, this is not necessarily a fourth axis tutorial video. We are going to do a lot of fourth axis stuff, but if you really want to see the basics and some even cooler than basic type stuff on fourth axis, check out my video series, uh, May the Fourth Be With You. Okay, so you're probably looking at this part and thinking, holy smokes, it's complex, I see a lot of tool paths. Folks, it is crazy, crazy how simple this is to make. I think it's really cool. Now, I say that not having machined it yet, so we'll see if I eat my words there. But nevertheless, there are some tool ops here that are actually unnecessary. Uh, the problem was I ordered a new four flute 3 16 end mill from Lakeshore Carbide and operator error, not realizing that the flutes were a little bit too short than uh, I was hoping for. So we've got some ops where we're gonna use the four flute and then finish up with a two flute that I normally use for aluminum. Hope that that'll be okay. But that ends up creating three extra ops. So let's go through this like we normally do. If I don't explain something here and you got a question, feel free to post it in the comments below. And as always, folks, I really appreciate sharing this video with your friends, liking it and the thumbs up and commenting below. It means a lot to me. I really appreciate it. And it's great to see some of the comments on other videos we've had recently have been really phenomenal and some really great intelligent uh, commentary from, from you guys out there. So as always, I appreciate your viewership. First thing we're going to do is mill this wrench flat. So pretty simple 2D contouring operation. All we do is select transformation, copying on the A-axis 180 degrees. And what that does is it'll machine the one side, flip it around, machine the other, boom. Okay, engraving the little logo there, that is a finishing 3D contouring. All we gotta do is select the base surface, choose cylinder, we know it's a seven eighths piece of bar socks, so the radius is seven sixteenths, which is that number, and then choose our little paths. We're using, I'll show you um, an engraver. Uh, let's see here, there we go. Yep, it is a, that's actually not true. It doesn't really matter for the purposes of this, but it is a um, 30 degree included engraving bit like so. And we'll render this. We may end up taking that deeper. We're going, I think, only five. Oops, only five thousands on the first pass, just to see what that uh, see what that does. Okay. The tangs out in the front. Again, kind of looks complicated. Really, it's not. What what we need to do though is recognize that when you're looking at this part as it's oriented. So here would be the right view. That's actually not true. I actually don't know why Sprout Cam is doing this to me right now. You can see that's my Z axis. So the correct orientation of the part from a Cartesian coordinate standpoint is like so. So to mill these um, flutes, we're using a 2D contouring operation. But to do 2D contouring on the fourth axis, you need to tell it the starting angle. I've already put that in here as 18.23 degrees. How did we get that? Go into SolidWorks, we'll look at our part, and this is, this is the face we're talking about right here. All we need to get is an me angle measurement of that relative to um, the perpendicular face, and you can do something simple like choose a face you already know about, like that one. We see 108.23, that includes 90 degrees more than we need, so 108.23 minus 90 gives us the 18.23. Once we do that, we'll go back to our top view. Sprout Cam sees it, it creates these tool paths where it cuts down, and then all I've got to do is machine a little bit deeper with the different end mill 3 16 again to finish it out. So I'll render that real quick. Oops, sorry, started on the wrong one.
not going full depth yet because it's rotating the part to finish all of the stubby end mill first. And now we're swapping to the longer one and machining all the way through. Now, this is as good a point as any to talk about sort of overall cut strategy. Here's how we're gonna cut this part. We're gonna start off with an 875 piece of 4140. We're gonna chuck it up in the lathe and we're gonna drill and ream our through bore. So this material that I've got modeled in the center here, it won't actually be there. We'll then have enough, we'll leave enough solid bar material left here where your, the mouse cursor is to hold in the four jaw, uh, the four axis uh, chuck jaw. That will let us, you know, have all of this real estate of the work part to do our machining on. Then we're done with this. What we will do is cut it off and face it, maybe in the mill, maybe in the lathe, haven't decided yet. And then we will do a final op of counterboring this as needed to do our thread milling. Uh, I'll do a, I'll cover that maybe in this video, maybe in the next one. But if you want to see more, I just did a video uh, how to use uh, multi through multi flute thread mills in Sprout Cam. You can click on that right here to take a look at that. So that's sort of our overall approach. Okay, next thing we need to do is machine out the muzzle brake area itself. And again, it looks complicated. It's not. Forgive me. I'll rewind one second and just show on the um, tines out at the front, all we do is the same thing we did for the wrench operation where we copy that tool path around the A-axis four times, not moving 90 degrees each, which is what gives us the fourth axis rotation of cutting each one of those. So we're back here. Obviously make sure your x-axis is back to zero because we're looking at the top of the part Again, I don't know why Sprout is doing that to me right now, but I'll figure it out. So the next part we want to do is this cursor um, area I'm following with the cursor right now. But first, we're going to rough it out so that way we've got some of the material out of the way. So I'm going to use a quarter inch four flute end mill. And the geometry I've selected is the two outside edges. And what we've done is offset the stock by 0.11 inches in order to move it in. So we're a little bit closer to this face here. So if we take a look, what that's doing is just sort of hogging out some of that material like so. Now one of the big differences I'm seeing already in Sprout Cam 9 is the ability to control uh, lead in and out in 2D contouring operations. And like I said, I'm not uh, at the point where I'm ready to profess knowledge about it. But what I have noticed is you can right click, uh, hold on, make sure I'm on the right. Oops, I'm not seeing it here like I had. Well, you can drag, sorry, you can drag these um, to extend the toolpath, which you could always do, but then Oh, you know what it is, folks? I think my graphics card sometimes works funny when I have uh, the screen recording software coming on, which is quite a bummer. But I'm right-clicking on that little bar there, and you get an option to choose a line or curve ramp in, and that's what's letting us control that. I've chosen the line, which lets me control this line like so, and the same thing like so. So you can kind of visually choose how, to, how much uh, material we want to remove here. The next operation, we just selected the line right here. And what that's going to do is come in and machine right along. We'll do a 3,000th cleanup pass at the very bottom. We'll see, we may get a little bit of chatter in, uh, in that pocket right there. I haven't gone all the way down yet, again, because I have an end mill physical problem with it being a little bit too short. Actually, this is a great example. This side did not render the um, clear out area first, and you can see we'd be left with this area here if we didn't do this, that prior operation to rough this area out. Okay. 
Oops. So the last two things are the dimples, which I'll come back to, and the under bottom half of the four muzzle brake uh, you know, slots, if you will. Now, if you remember, we talked about in the CAD video, the bottom slots are actually a different dimension than the top slots. So what we do is we're doing a two, uh, 2D contouring again, and we just tell the Tormach to rotate the part 180 degrees or flip it over. And same thing, we just choose the um, four tool paths like so, and we set um, our depths that we're coming down just, you can see here I'm just, yeah, there it is, that line right there. I'm just going deeper than the um, opposite side came down, so we'll end up, I'll right, simulate it here, we'll end up with a completed part. Won't happen there because again, I'm using the stubby end mill first, do the other sides. One more, and then here it's gonna come back and clean it up really all the way through. And again, you could ignore this thing here. All that, that, the only reason that's there is I did not render or simulate fully this operation right here. So that's actually, believe it or not, the majority of the work. Uh, the dimples, I have been having a problem with these, and I've actually been working with Jacob over at Tormach, uh, he's the sprut cam expert, on uh, getting them to work. And I think I've come up with a solution, but I'm not totally um, happy with it yet. So I'm gonna wrap this video up there. We'll come back to the dimples. We'll get a machine one way or the other, but I wanna do it right, and I'm frustrated that I haven't figured it out. Uh, the problem is that you would naturally think it's a whole machining operation. Uh, what I'm trying to do is use a ball end mill to plunge down in and create these little dimples, but you cannot get Sprut to recognize this as a whole because there's no sidewall. It's just a shallow hemisphere. So more to come on that. I hope you guys see from this that what looks like a complex part is pretty darn simple. And if you were doing this in production, uh, you could simplify the tool paths more. You could create fixtures from, you know, machining a multiple of these or, or, you know, quick indexing type stuff. You could obviously use better end mill selection than I'm using right now. And I've in fact thought about purchasing the correct length 3 16 end mill so we didn't have these extra ops. But, you know, the truth is that sometimes you've got to roll with what you've got on hand. And it's a good example, I think, of how you kind of make do. So. That is a wrap for the cam episode. We will be back, folks, both to clarify the dimples and then to machine this guy. Take care. See you soon.